Just how fast can you improve a Rocket League? I mean, if you were a relatively new player, a lower ranked player, if you had some coaching, how fast could you improve? Well, I put a competition on my Twitter about two months ago. The winner would receive one month's full coaching package. That's two hours of coaching a week with goals, challenges, and everything recorded in documentation so that the player would know what to do and could look through any stuff we'd gone through just in case they had forgotten. The winner was Jackie on Cracky, and when I checked his ranks, I saw that he was silver free div four and twos and gold free div two and ones. And I was actually really excited at the opportunity to work with Jackie, as this was something I had always wondered. How far could you push someone through the ranks? I've decided to share this video with Jackie's blessing to hopefully help show you guys how we achieved it and how you could potentially achieve it as well. Week one, session one. The first thing to do whenever you're coaching a person in sport, esports, is to set realistic, smart goals. These goals should be specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and have a time constraint. You set the goal too high and the player will get demoralized if they don't attain them. You set the goal too low and the player may be defeated before they start as they think, is that it? What's the point? The goal set to Jackie were to try and break into the plats for twos and ones by the end of the mum's coaching. It was also important to let Jackie know that this would require his own training outside of the coaching sessions. So before I started, I asked Jackie to record some ones games and send me the demos. I don't care about wins, losses, I just need to see what's going on. And here's what was happening. Jackie's kickoff was not central. He was continually getting bested on kickoffs by hitting the edge of the ball. To fix this, I explained how kickoffs work and how you should aim to get a nice chunk of the ball's hitbox. Ideally the center. Especially at low ranks as the players will have a tendency to hit the sides of the ball given an easy victory. Boost. We all love big boost pads. Good old big boost pads and Jackie is no exception. He would often leave the play, ignore the little pads in search of the big boost pad, explaining to Jackie the different paths he could have taken to allow him to gather smaller boost pads on the way back to net was important to let him know that he didn't need to go so far away to get the boost and put himself out the play. To help fix this, I told him to play some ones games with the challenge of not grabbing any big pads to help iron this out. Also, when it comes to boost, Jackie would just use his boost unnecessarily. And what was important to know is that every goal he scored on the replay, he had zero boost. Now, this is important for two reasons at lower ranks. The first being that if you use your boost unnecessarily, you cannot finish your shot with mean intentions. But also because in lower ranks, people tend to use their boost straight away and this forces them to hit the ball into their opponent, aka turning over the possession. Whereas if they just played it slower and kept the ball closer, they would probably have more options to create. Not defending the front post. This is a big one. In recent times, I've played a lot of plat and under players in ones to help improve my knowledge of how all ranks play the game in the current day. And what I noticed a lot of players do is leave a gap for no reason at the front post. Now, this allows the opponent to just hit the ball right into the gap. Often, the reason for this is because the player does not stay on the same side as the pitch as the ball, so they come from back post. Now, although in twos and threes, this could be good, not so much in 1v1, where you need to always be available to block and defend. So I taught Jackie how to effectively use the shadow position. And if you want to learn this, please click in the top right corner, uh, or you can just check the description below for the shadow in tutorial. The other thing I needed to do before the coaching was over is to explain to him that I needed 10 ranked 1v1 games every single day. And during that, focusing on what we had spoke about. And he probably would lose ranks because he was going to be doing something he's not comfortable with, but that was just at the start. Hopefully it would go up in the long run. The second session of week one, we went over two more replays to find what other trends we could see. Lad or dribbles. If you've been following my free Rocket League Mastery course, you will know I'm a huge advocate for using the lateral dribbles to set up the offense. Now, I understand sometimes it's hard to do, especially against a chasey opponent. However, from reviewing the footage, there were plenty of times Jackie was given space and could have gone for a lateral push into a hook shot to easily put a hard shot on, or to just switch the opponent and get a carry into a flick turning at front post so jackie's doing a great job now of defending the front post but he's doing the classic thing and we all do we all do this it's when you turn out to face the ball now when you're sidewards on your car is a long hitbox it's, it's, it's the longest it can possibly be when you're sidewards to the ball when you turn in field to try and face the ball now you are making your car shorter 
because it is now the front facing the ball and doing this is uh, very easy for the opponent to put a shot past you. The discipline comes from waiting in that sideward position and instead of turning, actually side flipping into the ball. And trying to hit it with your bonnet as you push forward. This not only helps you make the save, it can also help prevent dunks, but it takes the ball's energy into the corner whereby you can start your offense not shooting open nets. Now this was the last thing in week one that we noticed Jackie was doing, and we all do this, right? We don't shoot open nets. Sometimes we lose our confidence. We feel like we cannot shoot. However, Jackie had a lot of open nets and he decided not to shoot. He would go for something more flashy. If you have an open net, put the ball in as fast as possible. So after this session, I told Jackie to continue to play 10 1v1 games a day, but to include the hook shot training pack twice a day, but to actually perform the pack a different way. Instead of going lateral at the start, I wanted him to push it down the wing and hook into it because a lot of the times he had the opponent already switched. So there's no need to go back because then you actually help them out. So by pushing it down the wing and going for a hook shot in field, that would allow easy opportunities. Now on to week two. Jackie's ranks have risen, especially in 3v3, where his rank has gone from plat one to plat three. So again, we went and looked at the footage to find out any issues that were happening, allowing the ball to roll overhead. Jackie was doing a great job of adopting a shadowing position and blocking the front post. However, when the opponent rolled the ball around the outside wall, he would let it roll over his head in front of the net. In this situation, you are allowing the ball to go in front of your net, which is always a big no-no. Teaching Jackie to take a turn up the backboard to prevent the ball getting across was an important thing to teach, as in both replays, he allowed a goal in this manner. Creating risky shots with no boost. Jackie is doing a great job of holding and winning possession. However, sometimes due to having possession so much, he starts to get a bit carried away and would go risky, especially when he had low boost. Now I understand where the game is heading and that these risky plays can pay off, but you always wanna have a contingency plan. What if it doesn't go great? What do we do? Well, if we have low boost, we can't really have any chance to recover. So in those situations with low boost, keep it simple. Try and play the ball in a manner that allows you to grab little pads as you go. At the back of this session, I told Jackie to reduce the training frequency to five 1v1s per day. Now, I know this may sound weird, but sometimes training less and playing less can allow you to achieve more because you can be in more of a relaxed state. Week two, session two, and this week we started looking specifically at 2v2. Now I'm a firm believer in creating your own style. Learn a bunch of things, learn the fundamentals and get competent at once. Then from there, take your crafted skill and then hone it in twos and threes or even extra modes. And of course, Another opportunity for me to mention that Rocket League Battle Cards now has a website, www.battlecards.co.uk. Check it out, look at the cards, become a card, look into it all. It's really cool. Shadow in as last man. Jackie in twos is a much more aggressive version of himself. And that's not always a bad thing. The thing to realize is when you are in danger of being beaten as last man, where you overreach and to try and challenge and thus get beaten. For this, I wanted to get back to the basics and just shadow as the last man, just like he does so well in 1v1. First man challenge. Interestingly enough, Jackie was actually more hesitant as the first man and is not challenging. And although you don't always have to challenge as first man, I feel that like most of the time you want to, if they are trying to control the ball, uh, maybe taking their time, Press the player, force the play, make something happen. Don't challenge the ball on the way back to net. Jackie would challenge the ball on the way back to net by cutting in. Now this can be useful. If you see your teammate is stuck in there in a 1v1, you can get some sort of disruption on the ball or the player. However, this tends to be better when the opponent is more central. If the opponent is near the wings, it's not really needed to keep jumping on them and challenging because you're actually gonna help them get the ball around faster and you're gonna throw your teammate off. In these settings, in these situations, rotate back post, let your teammate challenge, and then you can react to whatever the response is. That is it for part A of Jackie's training. Hopefully this can help play a similar rank to Jackie as they may be doing the same things. Please comment below if you find this kind of content useful, guys, um, and subscribe because we'll be doing another episode real soon. And as always, have a nice life. Peace.